Welcome back, everyone. We've got a ton to talk about today from a new working group from the Open ID Foundation, entitlements and authorization, and what's going to be coming up in terms of authorization at industry conferences. So grab your favorite beverage, some leftover Halloween candy, and join us. And welcome back, everyone. We are so excited to be back with this, which is, I think, the fourth episode of our podcast. And per usual, we've got a ton to cover today. I'm joined, as always, by the ever-entertaining Mr. David Brassard. Hey, David, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon, doing good, and you? I am hanging in there. Um, so we've got we've got a bunch of stuff that that we can cover today but i know it's been a really busy month i think for everybody universally but i think for you in particular you've had some travel on your schedule so i wanted to ask you a little bit about that because it sounds like you've had some pretty interesting conversations in your journeys over the last few weeks correct um i i try not to travel anymore as much as i used to uh, partly because we have a newborn and traveling with a well leaving the newborn at home is uh, a little hard on the partner uh, but I did manage to sneak away for a whole week to go to IW, the Internet Identity Workshop, um, that takes place twice a year in beautiful Sunnyvale, California, just south of San Francisco. And I had the opportunity to go there with Mark Berg, one of my colleagues, to essentially meet a bunch of identity nerds, to, to put it plainly, and, and chat about everything, historically mainly identity, um, over there. Uh, but what was interesting this time, we'll, we'll get into it later, is how much boom there was for authorization this year. That is interesting. And I think, David, that feels very much reflective of the the conferences we've certainly seen of late. I know, uh, as we discussed in an earlier episode at Identiverse, authorization was definitely front and center. Um, at a few of the, the industry analyst conferences as well, it's moved from uh, kind of a side track or more technical track conversation to um, some of the main stage discussions. So that's that's really good. Were, was there anything in particular that stood out to you um, at the show? I know you got to talk alpha a little bit too, which is fantastic. Yeah, I, I so lots of sessions on authorization from um, OAuth related authorization work, um, like rich authorization requests, or things like user managed access or UMA for short, um, to newer things happening like the Cedar policy language, like uh, this whole idea that you can do access control lists at scale through Zenzibar and Zenzibar like approaches, uh, like a couple of new vendors as well that were hanging out over there, uh, but also two um, initiatives really close to my heart. One is uh, it is now official. The Auth Zen Working Group at OpenID Foundation, which will focus on everything authorization and, and going that you know beyond the traditional identity frontier. Um, and the other one um, is um, a few of us got together to try and create what might be the next generation conference for authorization, a little similar to what you have in the identity world with Authenticate. Try to emulate that at having an authorization dedicated conference. Um, call it, you know, four three COD or um, access permitted to COD, um, something like that. But it, it should be a fun um, group of people trying to put together material for for a conference happening probably in twenty twenty four. So these are the the two initiatives really really close to my heart. That's fantastic, and I think you know the time is definitely right for an authorization specific conference. I, I feel like that's going to be very, very well received um, based on you know a lot of the conversations that we're hearing and having uh, certainly. But I want to dive in a little more to auth Zen. So tell us a little bit more about that. what's the what's the goal here? what are the what are the next steps? Why is this exciting and, and for you and why are you taking part? So for sure, it's it's an initiative that kind of timidly started um, summer of 2022, didn't really go anywhere. It was revived at Identiverse, and uh, we we hit critical mass between Identiverse and essentially IIW 
Um, there's about a dozen participants coming from far and wide, a lot of vendors, some standard spokes, a couple of customers as well. And, and also, you know, when I say vendors, vendors with radically different approaches, right? You've got the policy folks, you've got the access control folks, you've got the attribute folks, the graph folks. So a, a broad range of, of approaches, which makes it way more interesting. And I think, I mean, the driver for all this is quite simple, um, twofold. Number one, there are more and more cyber attacks today, right? And all of them, nearly all of them exploit identities. So identity and authentication alone clearly is not enough to secure the environment. We need something else to mitigate those attacks. So that's kind of one of the, one of the things we've noticed, right? A, a lot of those attacks are successful because users are over permissioned, over provisioned, over entitled. I kind of like a three-year-old over entitled as a matter of fact. And, um, and with the difference that a three-year-old wouldn't maliciously try to steal data from someone else, but maybe a cookie, who knows? Um, so that's that's one aspect. The other aspect is that within the realm of standards, um, there had been Oasis ZACMOL. It ran its course. It's very mature, very well established. Um, it, it still exists, by the way. It's, it's not shut down or anything. I, I don't think there's any talk of shutting it down. However, SAML, the working group, was shut down, I think, a month ago. Um, because it had run its course and it was done and mature. What we want to do now is take the work that happened in, in other places like Oasis Actable, uh, but like the Cedar folks, uh, like Alpha, and move that to the next wave of standardization. And in particular, one thing that standards kind of failed to do in the world of authorization specifically is get software developers and SaaS developers and COTS companies on board. So one of the main missions, if not the main mission for AuthZen will be to get those folks involved earlier on. And that's going to go through education. That's going to go through design patterns. That's going to go through interoperability to make those developers, those SaaS vendors, those COTS vendors adapt and adopt um, uh, authorization. And, you know, the, the key word that we've been sort of saying in the, in the, in the Alt-Zen working group is we want to have the OAuth moment. Right. The OAuth moment, Kelly, is this idea that, you know, 10, 15 years ago, every single app did authentication its own way, its user management its own way. It, it was a black box and there was a database somewhere in the back end of your app that would store usernames and passwords and and that was pretty ugly. And then suddenly, SAML at first, more from a federation single sign-on perspective, but then later, OAuth and OpenID Connect came along and said, you know, you shouldn't be doing authentication on your own. You should really be delegating that. How about you open up your app, connect to an IDP, a central IDP, and let the IDP, the identity provider, do its thing, the authentication piece. We want to have that same moment, right? OAuth was successful because it had to find clear patterns, clear flows, clear interfaces to, to have that dialogue happen between the application and the identity provider. We need to do the exact same thing with authorization. I like that, David. And I think that's that's certainly, you know, we know that's where we need to go. I think one of the, and you spoke to education, which is what kind of made this this next question dawn on me, was we know though there's a there's a there's a gap, there's a, a chasm almost between where you guys and the incredibly smart folks who are obviously living, breathing authorization and talking in in this working group, and where enterprises are living right now in terms of their maturity and their ability to even progress through, as you just mentioned, authentication. So what do we need to do to start closing that gap, to start getting people ready so that they're at a place where they can start making these critical jumps to adopting authorization? Because to your point earlier, we know has to happen. Identity is at the is the number one um, threatened threatened part of security. We need to do better. How do we get to a place where enterprises are ready to do better and adopt authorization? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I might even say it's the million dollar question. I think first and foremost, it's education and awareness. Awareness that there is a solution. 
the the problem maybe with authorization is that it's a it's a much more diffuse problem than authentication. Authentication, you know, everyone more or less understands that it you present something that proves who you are. So a username, password today, um, you know, a, a pass key tomorrow. But we understand that authentication is just that one protocol, if you will, where you say, "Hey, I'm David. I can prove I'm David." And okay, done and dusted. I can go ahead and and go do whatever it is I want to do with my app. And authorization is not as clear, right? Uh, it mixes identity concepts with application concepts with service concepts. It mixes responsibilities too, because you have the identity folks within an enterprise that have to work hand in hand with the application folks or the API folks. So it's not as clear cut. That said, I got some really good news. A lot of companies, unbeknownst to them and to us, they've actually been doing authorization. I mean, oftentimes I'll talk to, um, you know, Fortune 500 businesses. And they'll go, oh, you know what? We we have had this initiative forever. We've actually built our own. We've, we've, we've grown our own, quote, policy decision point before we even knew it was called a policy decision point. So we've tackled that challenge. So I think it's a matter of helping companies realize that um, they do have authorization challenges. I think they know that already, that they might actually have solved those authorization challenges in a good way. And now they can make it evolve and actually start using uh, reusable blocks start using, you know, either an open source framework or a vendor solution to, to take, the, take the next step to mature their authorization stack. Um, and then they can also share their experience and learn from others to make their authorization deployments better. I, I think a, a lot of companies, even though they might not have um, bought a product or, or adopted a framework, are already doing some kind of authorization. So it's just a matter of making that more visible, more standardized, more streamlined, and more secure. That makes that makes sense. And I think probably highlighting some of the companies that have made that that leap successfully, which is something I'm assuming in theory we could do at a new at a new conference and at existing conferences too, uh, would likely help uh, in terms of education because it's giving right those pragmatic steps, those pieces, okay, here's Here's how we did this successfully. Here's the barriers we faced. Here's how we worked through them. Um, because we there's there's lots of education in terms of why you should implement authorization. But it feels as though that's that's another missing piece, right? Of that uh, of that overall education story is, hey, I did this correctly. Other companies, here's here's how you can learn from what we did, uh, which right. we don't tend to see as much of, do we? No, no. There's there's right now there's relatively little publicly available sharing of authorization stories. I, I think one of the more famous examples I can think of is Netflix presenting how they had tackled authorization at Netflix, uh, you know, five, six years ago, or um, Google sharing their experience with their own way of handling authorization for um, the entire family of Google Drive and YouTube and everything Google, right? Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, there are very few examples of, of um, companies having gone through the authorization journey and willing to share that experience. Um, and so that's what we aim to, to, to address. And there's other things too, right, Kelly? Um, uh, you know, a first step of authorization might be, let's have something that decides for you an authorization engine, a, a policy decision point. But that's kind of like the first step. You know, there's other aspects like um, a governance of the authorization configuration or access reviews of that authorization. How do you do that? Is it is that gonna stay a secret sauce of a vendor? Or is there a way we could standardize that maybe to make it easier on customers? What are the expectations from the compliance teams? How do we meet those those expectations? We collectively, not we specifically, a vendor. Um, that's that's you know the next steps that you want to take in authorization to make it better than just having an, an authorization engine. And I think there's also you know from an education standpoint, there's things that we want to help people understand. You know, there's the notion of uh, user driven authorization. And there's the notion of enterprise-driven authorization. So at Axiomatics, we tend to live in the world of enterprise-driven where the enterprise or the application owner or the business analysts own the requirements for authorization, dictating things like only managers can view documents in a certain department. Uh, but the user-managed authorization that, that I don't tend to uh, live and breathe every day, that's what the, the, the likes of Eve Mailer with user-managed access has been trying to tackle. And it's also a very fundamental part of authorization. So 
bringing all of us under the umbrella of all that is going to help us and under the umbrella of the authorization conference is going to help us um, exchange notes, exchange approaches, see how we can combine our work together to deliver a more comprehensive authorization approach. Uh, so that that's something I'm really excited about. That is exciting. I think that's going to be a, a big step in moving overall awareness forward, but also moving the 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 in, our industry forward. Um, right. So that that's great, and I look forward, you know, to being able to pick your brain in future episodes on how things are coming along. Um, I think the other piece, David, that I wanted to touch on that uh, that that came to mind through that was. In terms of where enterprises sit right now, one thing that we know, and you talked about this a little bit earlier, was we still deal with very common problems like over provisioning and, and stretching of um, approaches, I think, that were well suited in the time they were created, but maybe aren't, are more of a band aid now when it comes to looking at access and looking at the, the cyber landscape as it exists. And one of those, I think, uh, are, I mean, are back, obviously, we've talked about that before, but the other piece is around entitlements. And I know this is a discussion we've had internally and one we've had with with you. Um, so I wanted to, to talk a little bit about what you're seeing around entitlements and where some of the confusion lies. That's a very, very good question. So historically, a lot of authorization is driven through permissions and entitlements. And entitlement is something that you give a user, you the administrator. It's a, a relatively manual process. It's something that happens at what I call birth time. It's a birth right or or an update maybe to your user persona within the enterprise. But it's not something that happens when you're trying to get access to something. Right? So if you want to open up a financial record, uh, by the time you're actually opening the record, we already know what entitlements you have. So it's a very static approach to authorization. It's also an approach that leads to um, an explosion of entitlements because due to its static nature, you need more and more entitlements to be, ex to be able to express the breadth of the application landscape, the data landscape within an enterprise. The good thing with entitlements, though, is that they're pretty easy to assign. Um, that's that's actually relatively easy. It's also a model that's been very well understood over the years because it's what we've been doing since our bag came along and even before, you know, so we go back to the 90s, right? Um, when we started on the authorization journey with Axiomatics uh, back in 2006, you know, we were very much enterprise-driven, like I said, policy-driven, attribute-driven to the point that we were saying, well, you know, you got to get rid of your entitlements. We were not that extreme, but it was kind of the idea. But lately, though, we've been realizing that there's there's a good balance to achieve between entitlements and policy on the other hand. So entitlements on the one hand, policy enterprise-driven on the other. Um, because sometimes there is no policy that dictates authorization. I, David, may want to share a document with you, Kelly, and there is no logic to it. I just want to share it with you. Maybe it's a picture of a cute little cat. Or maybe it's actually a, a document for this podcast that I need to share with you. But there's no rule, right? There's no policy. So I do need to have a means to share that with you. That would probably happen through an entitlement or um, a, a, an access control list, uh, maybe um, Google stock. And so what we're realizing little by little is that there's value in combining the two models together, both the enterprise-driven and the um, user-driven, uh, the discrete access control, if you will. And combine those two models into the same framework would actually give open up more possibilities in terms of defining authorization. What we do want people to realize, though, is, as, as we have been preaching for many, many years, not everything is an entitlement, and there's a good reason for that. If everything were, then, then we go back to the whole role explosion, entitlement explosion, but we also go back to challenges around audits challenges around access review, challenges around governance, because we no longer remember why a certain person gave another person that entitlement. We don't remember whether it's still valid, whether it should be expired or deprovisioned. So if you can move as many of the arbitrary authorization to enterprise-driven, policy-driven authorization, all the better. But you will you also need to leave room for the um, arbitrary sharing the, the Kelly and David example with that with that um, podcast uh, document that I was that I was mentioning earlier so there's a bit of both 
That makes good sense. Um, and I think, David, I'm, I'm looking at the time here. I think that's all the time we have for today, which works because you've told me two questions in a row that I had really good questions. So I'm going to retire on a high on this episode. Um, but thank you again. It's been fascinating listening to some of what's going on. It is absolutely wild how quickly things are moving and how much we have to talk about each each episode. So thank you to you um, for your time and, and uh, thoughtful commentary. And thanks to everybody for listening. Deeply appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. And if you want to jump on any of the bandwagons, either the OpenID one, um, the the URL for the working group is openid.net slash WG, as in working group, slash auth zen. And that's spelled E-U-T-H-Z-E-N, or for Canadians, E-U-T-H-Z-E-N. Well played. Um, and with that, Kelly, um, if anyone has any questions, of course, they're always welcome to reach out to me. Thank you. Thanks all, and we will talk to you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Dynamically Speaking. Stay tuned for our next one, and in the meantime, check the show notes and connect with us on LinkedIn and YouTube. And visit us at axiomatics.com to learn more about our authorization solution.